Regular meeting number 17 will now come to order. Uh, please stand for the playing of the national anthem. Councilmember Mitch Brown, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're joined this uh, evening for, with Monsignor Cody. Monsignor Cody, welcome back to Council and thank you for being here. Thank you, President Harden. Let us pray together, friends. God, ever close to us, we ask for your presence and your wisdom as the members of Columbus City Council gather this evening to address the needs of the citizens of our city. During this holy time of year, when Christians celebrate Holy Week and Easter, and when our Jewish brothers and sisters celebrate Passover, may all of us come to a new appreciation of our spiritual roots and traditions, and as a result, be renewed with your help, Lord, to make this world a better world and make us better people who work tirelessly to improve the lives of all, especially the poor, the marginalized, and the vulnerable. Your holy law requires us to love you and to love our neighbor as ourselves. May this Passover and Easter be a time of recommitment for all of us so that we can live together in unity and peace, which is what you want for us and which is your best gift to us. Amen. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Harden. Any person who takes any actions to obstruct or interfere with the conduct of tonight's meeting may be charged with disturbing a lawful meeting pursuant to Columbus City Code 2317.12. Any person who enters those areas of city council chambers reserved for city officials or invited guests may be charged with criminal trespass pursuant to Columbus City Code 2311.21. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Is there a uh, clerk call the roll? Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Harden. This week's communications received by the city clerk's office are listed on the agenda and will be published in the city bulletin. Are there any other communications to be read into the record? Not at this time. We will we'll proceed to uh, resolutions by members of council. We have a packed house this evening, a lot of guests in uh, city council chambers. And so we're going to go out of, of order uh, for a bit just so that we can um, have folks come up in a timely manner. So I'm going to uh, go to council member uh, Tyson first. Thank you. Thank you, President Harden. Um, before I do my first resolution, I'm going to ask for Timothy Costa to come to the podium, please. When walking into, into City Hall this evening, you may have noticed a photographer taking photos in the first floor hallway. I've had the opportunity to partner with the Greater Sister Cities International and Experience Columbus in order to host Emmanuel Timothy Costa, a photographer from, the, from our Columbus sister city, our oldest sister city, at 63 years old, the sister city of Genoa. From March the 25th through the 9th, he is most, he'll be here from March, from March 25th through the 29th. He is most known for his exhibit called The Thousand People of Genoa, which is a collection of portraits that represents the culture of his hometown of Genoa. Timothy will be recreating the, his infamous work with new subjects, 
the faces of individuals from throughout Central Ohio in a new exhibit, The Thousand Faces, Thousand People of Columbus. We can talk a little bit about how this idea began, but I would ask that um, for those of you who are in the audience who want to have a photo taken, go down to the first floor after um, this session and, uh, and doing once the um, resolution section is completed. The Thousand People of Genoa photo exhibit will be displayed in the Cultural Arts Center, the John Glenn International Airport, the Columbus Museum of Art, the Columbus Convention Center, and the Franklin Park Conservatory. I want to thank my council colleagues for being very supportive of um, supporting this exhibit as well as um, some other initiatives that have happened that we have been working on with the city of Genoa. In 2015, I had the opportunity to meet Timothy in Genoa. It was our 60th anniversary um, and doing the Columbus Day event in Genoa. And from that visit, we had a we had a pesto festival that was in the fall of this year. The winter of the pesto festival was in Genoa a week and a half ago and um, in the international pesto competition and Marcelo Marcello will be coming to council and in a few weeks to get a resolution for his participation and winning and being the person that represented the United States the second part of that visit is tonight is I'm having Timothy here in council chambers and taking photos and the last will be in January of 2008 of 19, we will have a delegation coming here from Genoa, but also they will be bringing the violin, um, Paganini's violin, to Columbus, and it, it will be 276 years old at that time. It will be played with Columbus Symphony Orchestra, and it will be part of the Harlem Renaissance Project. And an individual by the name of Regina Carter will be playing that violin. Um, she is an African American female from Detroit that will be playing the violin. She she played it in right after 9-11 in Genoa. And so we're so happy that Timothy is here. He came here last year in preparation for this year's visit. And again, Timothy, we're so happy that you're here. And we look forward to residents um, of Columbus having photos. I see in, the, in council chambers, Timothy Sword, who is the president and CEO of Sister Cities. And we have Samin Dafar, who also was on the trip just recently when we were all over in Genoa, did a fantastic job um, in um, general for us. So Timothy, the um, podium is yours. Mr. President, members of the council, thank you very much for hosting me. Uh, it's a honor for me being here. Um, with this um, exhibition, I'm uh, bringing here my town, Genova, uh, showing uh, his uh, uh, unique uh, particular faces. And uh, the project is uh, to capture these thousand people of Columbus. And we started today here in this uh, amazing place uh, and bring it to Genova. So these two cities can know each other um, face to face. Uh, even if uh, there are 50 years of relationship between these two cities. And um, um, the idea to uh, have uh, the Columbus name uh, spread in Genova and know that uh, there is a city that has uh, the name of uh, one of our uh, citizens um, is something that no, not everybody know. And uh, now with articles, with this project, with all the, jo uh, the job that city city, Sister Cities is doing and you're doing, uh, most of my um, uh, uh, people just start to know what is going on and uh, and what and that there is a a seat and people that uh, know my town and vice versa so uh, we're going to stay here two weeks it's going to be a great experience and uh, we're looking forward to have all of you in our collection Thank you, Timothy, for Thank coming you. in. And I know we're going to present a resolution to you later on this week. And we will be all over the city taking pictures of the diversity of the city of Columbus. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm now going to read my first resolution and I'm going to ask if um, I am going
It is resolution number 0079X-2018, and it is to commemorate Women's History Month by recognizing and celebrating the career and the achievements of Mrs. Ann Boston Walker. I'm going to have her come towards the podium. And it is, whereas the origins of Women Hist Women's History Month dates back to March 8th of 1911 when International Women's Day was first celebrated. The recognition grew into a week-long celebration and in 1987 the United States Congress formally commemorated Women's History Month. Whereas Mrs. Ann B. Walker, a native of Columbus and a 1940 graduate of East High School and later Prairie View AMN Uni University, located in Prairie View, Texas, began her journalism career as an editorial writer with the Ohio Sentinel in 1949. In 1962, she began broadcasting as the on-air women's director and assistant news director at WVKO Radio. She joined channel WLVC TV4 in 1968 and later became the first woman in broadcast management as the community services director. She produced documentaries, anchored morning news, and talk shows and developed a broadcasting internship program for students like Angela Pace and others. She also became the first African-American woman elected to the Ohio Legislative Correspondents Association. And whereas President Carter appointed Ms. Walker as the White House Media Director for the Community Services Agency. After her retirement, she and her husband, Linwood, continued their community service efforts and later developed a travel business focused on Africa. Whereas Mrs. Walker has been a part of over 40 community organizations, including the Columbus Area Leadership Laboratory, Planned Parenthood, the Columbus Zoo, the Columbus Metropolitan Club, the Leukemia Society, the National Vice President of Women in Communications, President of the Regional Chapter of the American Women in Radio and Television, has also held leadership positions at the state, regional, and national level with Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, Inc., and was also inducted into the inaugural class of the Ohio Women's Hall of Fame in 1978 whereas the Walkers have helped to recruit more than 100 young, young African professionals, helping them to settle, enroll, and graduate from college. This work include identifying housing, campus visits, and financial aid. Mrs. Walker will celebrate her 95th birthday on November the 1st of 2018, remains tied to the development and, and remains tied to development projects in West Africa. Whereas Mrs. Walker is a member and ruling elder of the Bethany Presbyterian Church, in 2005, Mrs. Walker was the with the assistance of her son, Keith, who is a chef, established a food ministry at the church that now serves food to more than 100 children and adults each week. Whereas Mrs. Walker, affectionately known as the Queen Mother for her affiliations with Africa, is currently active with the Franklin Park Civic Association, the Bronzeville Neighborhood Association, the Ubuntu Book Club, the King Arts Complex, the NAACP, the Columbus Museum of Art, the Columbus Historical Society, the Ohio History Connection, the ACLU. She has been invariably selected to, to leadership positions within, within many of these organizations. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus that this council does hereby commemorate Women's History Month by recognizing and celebrating the career and achievements of Mrs. Ann Boston Walker. Mrs. Walker, the podium is yours. Council President Shannon Hardin, Councilwoman Patricia 
uh, Priscilla Tyson and all other members of city council. Kind of great being back here on the floor. It's been a long time. <clears throat> but I do want to say thank you for uh, choosing me as a person to recognize during this month, uh, this Women's International Month, uh, Women's History Month. Because even though you have read pages of information, rest assured, it was not an easily traveled road to achieve all of that. Um, <laughs> I stand on the shoulders, of course, of my ancestors and yours. <clears throat> but at the same time, I grew up in an environment here in Columbus where uh, to give service was recognized as uh, an achievement, where the elders in the community set the example. And so it was easy to follow. Doors were open. And as those doors opened, I tried to open doors for others. In fact, one door was open so wide that it sent me all the way to Washington, and I still don't know who wanted me out of town that badly. <laughs> but Africa, there's an African proverb which says that um, a single woman can achieve, but many women can achieve more. And so that's what I have tried to do, whether it's been a single mission or whether it was a collaborative effort, pretty much like you, uh, Councilwoman Tyson, with your health projects throughout the community. I felt that as long as I, and these are the words of Marion Wright Edelman, as long <coughs> as I realize that there is no free lunch, that you have to set goals and work toward them. I felt then that I could continue to make a contribution in the Columbus community. Columbus is home. I tried to escape it. I went to college in Texas, but I came back and I Wherever, whenever I left, I was always pulled back. And so I finally realized I just might as well stay here and work. And so that's what I've done. Yes, there is no free lunch. But you know what? <clears throat> Unlike um, Mayor Marion Craig, I don't know how many of you remember her, but she had a drawer in her house called God's Drawer. And she and her husband, they lived in Urban Crest, and she and her husband would put money in that drawer whenever they had a few pennies. And then if somebody in Urban Crest needed help, they had something to help them with. So she called it God's drawer. Well, I don't have a God's drawer. I got a lot of drawers in my house, but they aren't God's drawers. I just remember covering her. She was the first, as you know, the first woman mayor elected in the country, and certainly the first African-American mayor who was elected in the country. And Marion served from 1972 until, oh, I don't know. She was on council for 12 years, and then she became the mayor. But even though I don't have a God's drawer, what I do have, what I still have is a commitment and I still have the energy to do what I can to improve the quality of life in the Columbus community. My sorority is built on service. My daughter is here who has known nothing but service. My son is here as well. So I have a commitment and I have the energy to do whatever I can do to make this a better community for everybody. All I can say, get out of my way. <laughs> but don't, don't leave, wait a second. 
it's, and you can see how beloved she is. She has her sorority family, her church family, her friends. Could everyone yes. who is here to support yeah. uh, Mrs. Walker please yeah. stand? Actually, we have Bethany. We have the uh, Presbytery of uh, Scioto Valley Presbytery. We have Mount Vernon Association. We have the AKAs. We have um, uh, the King Arts Complex. And we've got the, the uh, community and extended family. Yeah, yeah right. Okay, did I miss anybody? No. And, and I know her ca uh, the, um, our county treasurer is here who attends the same church, and I think there's Cheryl Brooks Sullivan here to recognize. All right. Any, any comments from anybody? Comments? All right. Thank you. I'm going to give you your resolution. Thank you. Oh, Councilman Harden. Well, well, first, just wanted to, to add, thank you so, so much. We do um, stand on your shoulders. You have paved the way in our, in our community um, for all of us to be here. And your advocacy um, and your speaking out uh, ha and when others are silent is something that I've always admired and appreciated, uh, is, is hearing your voice um, sometimes when there is silence from others. So thank you and God bless. Councilmember Tyson. Thank you. I move for adoption. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Harden. Passed. The next resolution is resolution 0072X-2018, and it is to declare April the 2018 as Minority Health Month in the city of Columbus. And I'm going to ask for um, Ryan Johnson and his team to come to the podium, please. And this team is led by um, Dr. Mashika Roberts. And this resolution is to declare April the 20. 2018 as the Minority Health Month in the City of Columbus, whereas the National Minority Health Month was first started more than 100 years ago as the uh, National Negro Health Week. In fact, Dr. Booker T. Washington dispatched a letter to the leading African American newspapers in April of 1915 proposing the observance of the Negro, the National Negro Health Week excuse me, arguing that health was the key to progress and equity in all things, and that without health and a long life, all else fails. And whereas Dr. Washington called on local health departments, schools, churches, businesses, professional associations, and the most influential organizations in the African American community to pull together and unite in one great national health movement. And whereas the, this observance grew into what is today a month-long initiative to advance health equity across the country on behalf of all racial and ethnic minorities, National Minority Health Month. And whereas Columbus Public Health created the Office of Minority Health to provide leadership in terms of reducing health inequities in minority communities in Columbus and its surrounding areas focusing on health awareness and disease prevention. Whereas the Columbus Office of Minority Health fulfills its mission by mon monitoring and reporting the health status of minority populations, mobilizing community partnerships and local action, developing policies and, and plans to support health efforts by informing, educating, and empowering our communities. And whereas the Minority Health Month campaign of 2018, in addition to partnering with various community organizations organizations to, rep to present programming throughout the month of April. We will feature events that include community health forums, wellness events, clinical management of STDs, healthy eating and walking promotion events, cancer awareness workshops, as well as bring attention to hypertension, substance abuse, domestic violence, nutrition, and more. And whereas this campaign will provide information which will promote healthy living, showcase the providers of grassroots health care resources, highlight health disparities in minority and underserved communities, and ultimately working to find ongoing solutions to improve minority health year round. Now therefore be, be resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus that this council is hereby recognized April of 2018 as Minority Health Month in the City of Columbus. I move for adoption. 
Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. Mr. Johnson, the floor is yours. Thank you. And on behalf of my colleagues that are here this evening and Dr. Mashika W. Roberts, our health commissioner here at Columbus Public Health, I would like to say thank you for this resolution. Uh, my name is Ryan E. Johnson. I'm the program director for the Office of Minority Health here at Columbus Public Health. <clears throat> the mission of the Office of Minority Health is to reduce health inequities. And thank you for sharing our four core competencies, so I won't go into that. As you know, April is Minority Health Month. And Minority Health Month encompasses a 30-day campaign of many activities designed to solicit the interest and participation of minorities and providers of health services to minority populations. In planning for Minority Health Month initiatives, our office has worked with stakeholders who serve on our Minority Health Advisory Committee. There are nearly 50 uh, local stakeholders, and we meet about six times a year, and we discuss current health initiatives, we discuss health-related issues, and we provide feedback on the integration of services to minority populations. Our next meeting is scheduled for May the 8th. It'll be at Columbus Public Health in room 119, C as in CAT. Wanted to make mention of that because there were a lot of audience members here today. Um, this meeting is open to the community. And so again, if you'd like more information, 614-645-7335. To kick off Minority Health Month, Please join me this Thursday, March the 29th, at the Health and Human Services Committee right here in Council Chambers as we present testimony to Columbus res uh, residents regarding our programs, initiatives, and services offered by Columbus Public Health as they pertain to reducing disparities related to the social determinants of health. This conversation will begin at 4 o'clock. Hosting minority health forums such as this gives our stakeholders and, more importantly, our listening audience an opportunity to learn about imperative health care issues. For more information on the Office of Minority Health at Columbus Public Health or any information I share with you this evening, please contact me again, Ryan E. Johnson, Program Director. My number is 614-645-7335, or you can reach me at rejohnson at columbus.gov. Thank you so much for allowing me to uh, share a few words about the wonderful work of the Office of Minority Health at Columbus Public Health. Thank you, Ryan. And can you also share that this Thursday, besides our hearing, there will be an event at the Rife Center that you will be participating in? It sure will, actually. And I actually have calendars. Um, and so um, what Councilmember Tyson is referring to is this is the official kickoff for Minority Health Month. It will be at the Vern Reif Center, uh, conducted by the Ohio Commission on Minority Health. Ms. Raina Sims, who is in the back, um, uh, works for the Ohio Commission on Minority Health, and she can definitely answer a few questions if you have any. I have um, calendars that have all of the highlighted initiatives for the month, and I can leave these with your team. Um, and if you have any questions, again, uh, 645-7335. Thank you, Ryan. And if you're interested in going to the commission, the uh, health fair, it starts at from 9 o'clock. I think 9 to 10 is the initial presentation. And then there will be lots of um, um, displays on, focusing on minority health and minority health prevention. So thank you. And congratulations to you and your team. And please, can we introduce your team to the viewing and listening audience, please? I certainly can. Over here to my left, we have Jesus Avalle, followed by Hebu Noir, Tara Tucker, of course, Dr. Roberts and Lindsay Lachey. Thank you so much, Ryan, and I'm going to present your resolution. I appreciate the work that you do year-round um, to um, change our disparities in regards to minority health, and look forward to hearing the presentation on Thursday at 4. Thank we'll you. We'll be there. Mm -hmm. And um, last but not least, I am going to ask the, all the young people and the coaches from Ames Middle School to come to the podium, please. So, so Ames Middle School 
We will be presenting them with their resolution and each of the players will also receive a certificate. But I wanna recognize them this evening. So um, Ames Middle School one is, um, I think it's always important to recognize middle school. Middle school is a tough time for young people. And so when we see young people that um, have won championships, we want to recognize them. And these young men won the city championship, basketball championship. And I want to recognize, I'll share Rennie Tyson, who is my son, who is the head coach for the team. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, so he was questioning who is here, but um, he's, uh, I'm gonna let him talk about their incredible year and also introduce the young men that um, played for Ames. Rennie, the floor is yours. Yes. Thank you this evening, President um, Hardin, the rest of the council members, and definitely my mother, Priscilla Tyson. <laughs> Thank you. Um, our, our journey began last August where we didn't even touch a ball for a whole month. We had to mentally be focused, focused and physically be ready, which led us to a 16-0 record. Um, we had a tough game in the championship against Columbus Berwick, which I know you've probably seen a lot and heard about, but uh, this was our year. And our young men were prepared and ready to go and we prevailed in the end. Um, so we're just thankful for these young men. But you know, the biggest thing that we learned, it wasn't about basketball, it was about life lessons. So we had a lot of opportunities in practice where we just didn't even talk about basketball. It was about how can you become a, a better man? And I believe I did that this, this year. But I also want to give a thanks to Dr. Leon Level, who's the, president, who's the principal at um, Arts Impact Middle School, who's sick today, who could not be here. We also want to thank the faculty um, who helped these young men, supported us throughout the whole entire season, as well as the parents of the Arts Impact boys basketball team. I'm going to go start from the left. We have Mr. Antoine. We they have- They can walk to the podium and say their names. Oh, sure. So they can, Come right can ahead. be on- Say your so name. So the parents can see them. Speak up, eyes up. Antoine Reed. Antoine Reed. Eighth. Jalen Simmons in the eighth grade. Evan White Ford, seventh grade. T. Jerk Turner in the seventh grade. Isaiah Wilkins, eighth grade. Amir Carter, eighth grade. Kyair Bradley, seventh grade. Michael Gabor, eighth grade. Robert Dorsey, eighth grade. Amani Laos, eighth grade. Michael McGonagall, eighth grade. Drew Rowling, eighth, seventh grade. <laughs> This is the team, thank you. And, and to the young men, I also want to thank, I mean, you did thank their parents because we know that when you're in middle school, it requires a lot that mm -hmm. your parents have to be involved. They don't drive themselves to practice. Their parents show up at those games, and so thank you to the parents. I also think it's important when you think about um, the, my brother's keeper, mm -hmm. that we certainly do need young men who are um, leading and coaching these young people that are focused on them being the best as they grow to be men. It, lots of the, the reason they'll be great men is because of the fundamentals they have learned while they're in these you know, middle school. And so I thank you, um, Mr. Rennie Tyson, for your leadership and your commitment to these young people. Yeah. I know how much you care about them. I thank you for working with them and their families. And again, we will have certificates for each and every one of you, as well as um, a resolution for you to have in your school. Congratulations on your 16 and 0 team. We're very, very proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you.
Council Member Stenziano wants and to I would just something. thank you, uh, Council Member Tyson. I would encourage you to stay around. You're going to have a wonderful ambassador to the sport of basketball, uh, even though on the women's side, uh, an amazing champion. So I'd encourage you guys to stay around and learn from a great champion that's represented Columbus and the community very uh, often. If you also have time, go downstairs and take your pictures. Yes. Seriously, uh, because it's important to show the diversity of our community. Yeah. So if their parents say it's okay and give that authorization, take some pictures downstairs so they can go to Genoa next year. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Tyson. Um, we'll go back in order. So, uh, Councilmember Elizabeth Brown. Thank you, Council President Hardin. Um, I would like to invite to the podium, please, the um, which Councilmember Cinziano just alluded to, our all stars, another group of all stars here tonight. Um, Linda Logan, Executive Director of the Greater Columbus Sports Commission. Meredith Cleaver, NCAA Director for the Women's Basketball Championship, Bruce Wimbish of the Greater Columbus Sports Commission, and Katie Smith, Head Coach of WNBA New York Liberty, and, and anyone else who's here actually um, for the NCAA presentation. Please, you, you may all come up. Um, so tonight I'd like to present Resolution 077X-2018 to recognize the Columbus Local Organizing Committee for its work organizing and hosting the 2018 NCAA Women's Final Four. We are so excited that the Women's Final Four will be in Columbus this coming weekend. Um, Linda, I'm sure it feels like you can't believe it's finally here. <laughs> so exciting, and we have, uh, we have a great team here I'd like to introduce, and a few of us will, will say a few words, but mm -hmm. um, I think we should start with our all-star, Katie Smith, who will be going into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame in just a few months. We have actually a oh, separate? separate resolution okay. for Katie. All right, well then, I don't want to show, Just all right, I wanted Katie. to show my proper props here. <laughs> Which first. I can right. go ahead and do right now if, you, if, if that would help your order, Linda. No, that's okay. okay. We'll, come, we'll right. save that for last. Okay. <laughs> well, first I'd like to invite um, Meredith Cleaver, who is the Director of Championships at the NCAA, to uh, come up and say a few words. Thank you, Linda, and thank you very much for having us here, not just tonight, but for the past year we've been coming for about a year, our staff has, to plan for this wonderful upcoming weekend here in Columbus. So the student athletes that are participating uh, tonight and the two teams that have advanced already in Louisville and Mississippi State have been working their entire lives for this opportunity to come to Columbus to win a national championship and to explore your city while they're here. It's really important to the NCAA that they have a phenomenal uh, life experience while they are here, and they will have just that. So thank you to you all, to the Greater Columbus Sports Commission, to Nationwide Arena, to the Columbus community, and everyone who has supported so far and will continue through this weekend and beyond, not just our NCAA Women's um, Final Four, but also every NCAA championship that has the opportunity to be in your wonderful city. Thank you. Next up, I'd like um, representatives from the host institution, The Ohio State University, Diana Sabo. Hello and thank you. On behalf of The Ohio State University President, Dr. Michael Drake, and your athletics director, Gene Smith, we wanted to thank you for all of your support for what the Final Four has brought to Columbus. Because without your support, there is no us. There is no for us, and there is no opportunity for our, Col our Columbus uh, youth and the student athletes that will be participating this weekend, and there is no Columbus, so thank you for that. We wanted to just make sure that you were aware that through our Beyond the Baseline programming with this upcoming year of preparation for the Final Four, that we were able to affect lives of over 600 young girls, professionals, and women in Columbus through monthly programming, which allowed them to step outside of their comfort zone, realize what it meant to, be, to fulfill their dreams and realize their dreams, and be put in situations that they might never have been afforded. So thank you for that opportunity, and again, thank you for us. Next up, we have Michael Ghetto representing Nationwide Arena. Good evening. Thank you for having us today. Uh, I would just like to say uh, thank you on behalf of my team at Nationwide Arena. Thank you to the NCA, uh, the partnership with Ohio State, the Sports Commission, the city, 
Um, putting on events is something we do a great job of at, in Columbus. And it's a great opportunity this weekend to highlight Columbus, to highlight the arena district, and to highlight the uh, arena and the city. And uh, we're just thrilled to have the event. It's uh, great to provide an opportunity for student athletes to enjoy and for the fans alike from all over the country, if not the world. Um, our purpose statement for our staff at Nationwide Arena is to excite, entertain, and engage. And that's uh, what we're going to do this weekend with all of our guests. So we're excited to have everyone here in Columbus. Thank you. Finally, just uh, to conclude, uh, just the impact of the, of the Women's Final Four economically, $20 million of visitor spending, uh, tickets sold in all 50 states. We are close to a sellout, and uh, we hope that um, we're going to have fans from all over the country enjoying our restaurants and our great attractions and our wonderful people. Uh, we couldn't have done it without your support. And um, we know that we're going to have lots of kids at the bounce. I know some of you are bringing your children on Saturday. Uh, so more, I guess I'll open it up for questions or see if anybody else on our group would like to say any, anything else. And as uh, um, we do have um, some representatives of some basketballs here uh, so that you can, as a token of the event, so that you can showcase Columbus to everyone that you see. So any questions for us? Uh, any comments from my colleagues? Uh, did you have one? Go ahead. Thank you, Councilmember Brown. I just wanted to um, say again, welcome to the NCAA. We're so excited to have you and to be a host. We are excited to showcase our city, but also to welcome the many um, families and um, competitors that will be playing this weekend. And so uh, very, very proud of the work that has been done over the last year uh, by the Sports Commission, uh, by the arena, and by all those who have stacked hands to pull this off. So look forward to the engagement. Thank you, Councilmember Brown, for bringing this to us. Great. Councilmember Tyson. Thank you, Councilman Brown. Um, I want to personally to say thank you to Linda. Linda, to you and your team. Uh, I know we, this has been something that's been worked on for quite some time. And just appreciate your leadership, uh, your leadership of your team, Bruce, everyone that's been, your board, that's worked hard on this. Certainly, I want to thank all the partners, especially the Ohio State University and your work. My name is Willis Michelle. How are you? And just th just say thank you because it certainly wouldn't have happened without your leadership. And um, I know through this through this whole period, lots has been going on, you know, pres professionally and personally. But you stuck right in and made this all happen. So thank you so much, Linda. Great. Thank you. We've got a great team. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Um, thank you again, and I just want to highlight that the planning that went into this coming weekend um, was is more than just the games being played on Friday and Saturday, so thank you all for that. Planning really focused on community-based charitable activities and events as well, um, and I know that was mentioned, but I want to highlight how grateful this council is for that. Um, and, uh, and the economic impact that you spoke to, Linda, um, is a very real thing for our community and it, and it wouldn't have happened, as Councilmember Tyson said, without your hard work and then the hard work of this whole committee. Um, so our deepest thanks and I would like to um, move for adoption of, and you can't go anywhere when I do because then we have one for Katie. Um, I'd like to move for adoption of resolution 077X-2018. Second. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, President Harden. Great, and I'm gonna um, bring you both resolutions at the same time. After we do 0078X-2018, yes. um, Katie, if you wouldn't mind taking the podium. Um, this resolution is to recognize Katie Smith for acting as an ambassador for the City of Columbus as it hosts the 2018 um, NCAA Women's Final Four. You are one of the most decorated players in basketball history and one of the greatest athletes to ever attend Ohio State. Yet you're here today because you've done even more than all that. The opportunity for Columbus to host the Women's Final Four presented a moment that you have graciously taken advantage of by donating your time to be a part of the festivities, including being here tonight. You've been described as a, the face of the events being hosted in Columbus this week, and we are thrilled to be represented by such an outstanding ambassador for college basketball, for Ohio State, and truly for our whole city. Some of your basketball career highlights are listed in the resolution, um, but rather than read through things that I know you've heard many, many, many times, 
I will just say that your resume and accomplishments required quite a bit of editing to fit onto one <laughs> resolution page here. Uh, I also want to congratulate you on being named the new head coach of the New York Liberty. So since Ohio does not have a local team, I feel guilt-free in wishing you and your team success. <laughs> well done, well done. You are a role model and an inspiration for women in Columbus and throughout the country, and I want to thank you again for continuing to give back to the community throughout the year, and especially for volunteering your time with the Final Four events this week. With that, I'll turn it over to you. Well, thanks for standing up here. Uh, they are the, the true... Uh, heavy lifters. I get to hang out and uh, show my face and share our, our big city. And um, I'm, I'm pumped. You know, the Final Four is where I, I, I got a chance to play in Atlanta. So being an athlete, I understand the special, you know, event, the memories that it'll build. And these guys are building them all. So I am truly honored and uh, always will represent Ohio as the best I can. Wonderful. Thanks. So I move for adoption. Second. Brown, Brown, Paige, Remy, Stanziano, President Harden. Councilmember Mitch Brown. Thank you, President Hardin. Uh, I have one resolution this evening. If I may, I'd like to call to the podium uh, Mr. Dave Montgomery and Mr. Capretta, and any other members rep representing the Fire Division of the IFF uh, Local 67. Resolution 0080X 2018 to recognize and congratulate the Columbus Firefighters Union Local 67 of the International Association of Firefighters on their 100th anniversary. Whereas the Columbus Firefighters Union Local 67 IFF is celebrating 100 years of service to the firefighters of the Columbus Division of Fire, and whereas established in 1918, Columbus Local Firefighters Union now represents over 1,500 firefighters covering 34 fire stations across the greater Columbus metropolitan area, serving 222 square miles and nearly 900 residents. And whereas firefighting has always been one of the most dangerous positions in public safety, as firefighters put their service to the community above their personal safety, and whereas our firefighters serve the citizens of Columbus in a wide range of services, including but not limited to structural firefighting, emergency medical services, advanced life support paramedic service, technical rescue, hazardous materials response, fire prevention education and inspection, bomb squad and arson investigation. Be it resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus that this council does hereby recognize and congratulate the Columbus Firefighters Union Local 67 IAFF on their 100th anniversary and to thank our Columbus firefighters for conducting themselves with selflessness, professionalism as they serve the residents of Columbus. Any of my colleagues have any comments before I move for adoption? Hearing none, I move for adoption. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Harden. Mr. Montgomery, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you. I wrote it down so I'd get it right. <laughs> He's a firefighter, you gotta remember, yeah, they, they do that easy. Thing. Yes. <laughs> Council President Harden. President Pro Tem Stenziano, Council Members Brown, Page, Tyson, Brown, and Remy. Thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening on the eve of our 100th anniversary of the, of the Firefighters Local 67. I'm honored to stand before you today as one of the 1,500 plus Columbus firefighters who go to work every day committed to saving lives in our city. Serving as a Columbus firefighter has been one of my greatest honors. President Obama once said, quote, there is a reason why firefighting occupies a special place in our imagination. Why little boys and girls say, I want to be a firefighter. They understand instinctively that there's something special about it. Imagine what it takes to put on 85 pounds of fire gear and override the natural human instinct for self-preservation and, and run into danger as others are running away. To literally walk through fire <clears throat> knowing that that you might never make it out because you are trying to save people that are strangers. 
This is what the men and women of, of the Columbus Professional Firefighters do each and every day. It is what they, what they have done for 100 years. I am grateful for this resolution commemorating this incredible achievement, and I'm humbled to stand before you on the shoulders of those who have come before me, those who have served with distinction, those who have given the ultimate sacrifice, and those who serve you each and every day. On behalf of my brothers and sisters, Local 67, thank you. Director Pettis, would you like to make any comments, sir? Council President Hardin, uh, Safety Chair Mitchell Brown, President Montgomery, uh, thank you for the opportunity to say a few words. And contrary to what uh, they might have told you, I was not a member for all 100 years of <laughs> Local 67. Although I have been a member for 41 years, it's been an honor and a privilege to be a recipient of and a partner in the service that they've provided to this community. You know, they helped the uh, Division of Fire be a model for fire departments across the country and internationally when they re helped to receive accreditation in 2007. That could not have been accomplished without their partnership. And it's my honor and privilege uh, to help them to celebrate uh, this achievement of a 100 year anniversary on, on tomorrow at their uh, local 67 Union Hall. Uh, and I'm so proud that they made me an honorary lifetime member. So uh, we appreciate the service that they've provided to our community, to the division, and to their members. Congratulations to you. Thank, Thank you, you, Director. Mr. Capretta, I'm not going to let you not say a few words, sir. No, 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 no. Do you remember who you used to work for? Get to the microphone. I want to thank you for the resolution. I will keep it nice, short, and sweet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, well, President Councilmember Tyson, yes. Thank you, Mitch. I want to just say thank you for not only the work that you do in terms of um, you know, your firefighting, the work that you're doing in rescuing people, and et cetera, but also just for your community service. Um, that um, you work within our community, you're trying to make lives better for our individuals in our community, for our young people, to, for our seniors. I just want to say thank you for the social service aspect of the work to improve our community and the volunteer aspect. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's all I have, Council President. Thank you, Councilmember Brown. Councilmember Remy. Councilmember Page. Thank you, President Hardin. This evening, I have resolution 0073X-2018 to commemorate Randy Black for his outstanding service to the city of Columbus and to congratulate Randy on his retirement. I would like to ask Randy and any guests who are with him this evening to come down to the podium. And I will read just a few of your many accomplishments. Randy Black has served as the city's historic preservation officer for 15 years, capping off a long, varied, and fruitful career. He is known for his success, um, including the municipal light plant and the dam tender house, which is the Lashaka Event Center. His leadership has been central to managing a vibrant preservation program covering six commissions, 40 volunteers, Section 106 review, 70 individual listings in 18 districts, all during a period of unprecedented investment in our older neighborhoods. And you were honored by Heritage Ohio as a 2015 Preservation Professional of the Year for your long career in preserving the historic fabric of Columbus. And I would also like to mention that you are one of the few city employees who I have never heard anyone not say anything but great things about you. So, and that includes our community as well as fellow city staff. And that just truly shows just your, the type of person that you are and just appreciate your service. There are any additional comments from my colleagues? President Hardin. 
Thank you, Councilmember Page, and thank you for recognizing Mr. Randy Black. Um, I'm certainly one of those city employees who've had the opportunity to work with Mr. Black uh, in my time when I was in the mayor's office. Um, the work that you've done, and, and Councilmember Page is right, um, hearing from the community the, the outward facing engagement that you have done on behalf of neighborhoods um, and, um, and communities who have seen changes to their community and have been fearful of uh, those changes uh, through architecture and to have you be their advocate and be both internal as and a representative of the city and our care for um, uh, the history of our community is something that I've been extremely grateful for. I'm so, so excited for your next chapter, um, but uh, just say thank you for the many years you've given to our community. We are very, very grateful. Thank you, Councilmember. Are there any additional comments? We'll see you then. I move for adoption. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Cinziano, Tyson, President Harden. Adopt it. And Randy, before you speak, if you don't mind, Director Shoney has a couple of comments. Uh, thank you, Chair Page, President Harden, members of council. Um, now Randy's really nervous because he has no idea what I'm going to say. Um, uh, you know, your comments about never having heard anybody um, say anything negative about Randy, I think, are a testament to the amount of work that he does because it's not because he doesn't push people. Um, he really does push everybody. He pushes all sides of every issue that comes to him by explaining why preser preservation is important, um, but it's not a goal in and of itself. I think one of the things Randy um, taught me and he showed me in his everyday work was that um, our history doesn't deserve to be placed under a glass dome, but it deserves to be uh, reused and celebrated and leveraged um, to create great places for our citizens. So I want to personally thank Randy for uh, his service to the department and to the city and for putting up with me for the five years that we've worked together and teaching me a lot uh, about the value of preservation and how to do it well. So that's it. Thanks. Thank you, Director. The floor is yours. Ultimately, preservation is about community. It's about people. It's about neighborhoods. Um, it's about people then, now, and in the future. And that's something that everybody needs to stay connected to. It's been an honor to work for the city. Um, it's been a long haul, but it's been a wonderful long haul. Uh, every day is different. The people of the city are, are great. Uh, and the community is great. There's always room to improve. Uh, keeping our built environment is really, really important, maybe more important to, to the residents than, than the city understands from time to time. Uh, but that's the job of the preservation office. It's, again, it's been an honor, and I appreciate this honor. Uh, didn't expect it, but I'm very grateful. Thank you very much. President Pro Tem. Thank you, President Harden. At this time, I'd like to invite Dr. Sarah Neville and the Lord Denny players to the podium as I introduce resolution 82X-2018 to recognize and honor the Lord Denny's players for the first modern performance of Shakespeare quarto text of the Merry Wives of Windsor. For those that don't know, the Lord Denny's players are the theatrical arm of the Ohio State University Department of English and provide an opportunity for students and faculty to engage in intensive experimental learning and research around the annual production of a play. Shakespeare's The Merry Wives of Windsor is well known in theater circles, but an early version of the play has not been performed since the early 17th century and has never been staged as a complete production until this year. Scholars argue that the first quarto was Shakespeare's initial draft of the play First Folio. By producing the first performance of First Quarto, Lord Denny's players have contributed greatly to Shakespearean academia and scholarship, drawing internationally renowned scholars to Columbus to witness the historic production. As people have told me, this is like the Super Bowl of Shakespearean plays. Uh, so as you can imagine, this is going to help contribute to the culture and academic climate in Columbus. So it's now my honor uh, to present this resolution to Dr. Neville and his recognition for you and the Lord Denny's players' dedication and work for benefiting the city of Columbus. Professor, I will give the floor to you first before we move uh, the resolution. On behalf of Lord Denny's players, I'd like to thank President Hardin and uh, the City Council very much for this recognition, particularly during Women's History Month. Uh, though Mary Wives of Windsor is and often has been recognized as Shakespeare's most English play, uh, it's the only one 
uh, set in the England of his own age and time. Uh, few know it as his most feminist production, as it is a play where women control the action, and they do so primarily by working together. And uh, I was delighted, as Anne Boston Walker said beautifully just a few minutes ago, I wrote it down because I thought it was so great. Uh, a single woman can achieve, but many women can achieve more. And if you look at the young women who are standing up here with me, this is absolutely uh, true, and I'd like to introduce them, if I may. Uh, this is Clara Davison, who is the assistant director, Ellie Rogers, who's playing the host, uh, Callan Alsdorf, who's playing Mistress uh, Ford, uh, Brie Clemens, who is playing a variety of roles, including Servant One, <laughs> and Heather Frazier, my uh, stage manager. Um, a single woman can achieve, but many women can achieve more. This is true in the fictional world of Shakespeare's play and in the reality of our world uh, where uh, these young women are doing phenomenal and inspiring, inspiring things, uh, along with uh, a good number of young men as well um, who just couldn't make it here today. Um, inspiring things like putting on a version of Shakespeare's play that literally has not been performed for 400 years. Uh, these women um, and the young men as part of this production are as much experts in this early 1602 text of the play as many of my professional Shakespeare colleagues are, and we're doing it here uh, in Columbus. So please come join us April 4th through the 7th uh, at the Columbus Performing Arts Center at 7.30 p.m. in the Van Fleet Theater. It's a fast play. It's only 75 minutes long. It's extremely funny. And uh, just to uh, make our firefighter colleagues at ease, all of the tapers are electric. Um, there is no live flame in this particular theater. Thank you very much for this recognition. Thank you, Dr. Neville. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? I do want to note it's shorter than a council meeting, um, so that's <laughs> worthwhile. If there are no questions or comments, I'll move for passage. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. Are there any com uh, comments by elected officials, city auditor, city attorney's office, city treasurer? I see that we have uh, the Hilltop Area Commission and Franklinton uh, represented this evening. Uh, any comments? Good. Uh, are there uh, any requests by members of council for the removal of ordinance or resolution from the consent action portion of the agenda? Seeing none, may we now have a motion to waive reading of the titles of 30-day legislation by the city clerk? Uh, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. Will the clerk now read into the record the ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda for first reading? Finance Committee Ordinances 685, 686, 718, 722, 750, 2018. Recreation and Parks Committee Ordinances 456, 474, and 476 2018. Economic Development and Small Business Committee Ordinances 720, 744, and 779 2018. Judiciary and Court Administration Committee Ordinances 401 and 725 2018. Neighborhoods Committee Ordinance 745 2018. Technology Committee Ordinance 667 2018. Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 467, 482, 523, 595, 609, 697, 707, 717, 719. 774-2018, Rules and Reference Committee, Ordinance 830-2018. The following ordinance are on our agenda, um, are on our agenda as consent action. Will the clerk now read those ordinance numbers into the record? Resolutions of Expression 84X, 85X, 86X, 87X, 88X, 81X, 83X, 65, 66, 68, 69, 70, 71, 75, and 76 X 2018. Finance Committee Ordinances 656, 678, 684, 715, 721, 731, 732, 733, and 737 2018. Recreation and Parks Committee 
ordinances 464, 472, 477, 478, 606, and 608 2018. Public Safety Committee ordinances 671, 681, 729, 775 2018. Public Service and Transportation Committee Resolution 37X 2018. And ordinances 573, 669, 670, 672, 688, 749, and 764 2018. Administration Committee ordinances 690 and 829 2018. Economic Development and Small Business Committee ordinances 701 and 713 2018. Housing Committee ordinances 702, 726, 727, 728, 748, 797, 814, and 815 2018. Judiciary and Court Administration Committee Ordinances 588, 589, 695, 762, and 781-2018. Technology Committee Ordinance 738-2018. Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 509, 524, 533, 553, 579, 708, and 753-2018. Health and Human Services Committee Ordinances 559, 560, 575, 680, 689, 773-2018, and appointments from the Mayor's Office numbered A0013, 14, 15, 16, 80, 83, 84, 85, and 86-2018. Thank you. We have one speaker on the consent agenda, uh, Mr. Nate Wilkins. Welcome back to Council. Mr. Wilkins is speaking in favor of Ordinance 0726-2018. Mr. Lathane George Wilkins, 1612 Arlington Avenue, the chairman is solely vacant in the property in the North Linden area. I will be speaking in favor of uh, 726-2018 for um, 1368 Genesee Avenue. I just want, want to know what's going to be done with the property and um, what would it, just want to know what it's going to be used for. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Wilkins. Uh, would uh, Director Shawnee, you will follow up with uh, Mr. Wilkins. If there are no other questions or comments on the consent agenda, may I have a motion for approval of these items? Please call the roll by voice. Ms. Brown? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Page? Yes, with the exception of 0560-2018, on which I am, am abstaining. Remy? Yes. Stenziano? Yes. Tyson? Yes, with the, with the exception of 0559-2018, on which I am abstaining. President Hardin? Yes. Uh, consent carry, uh, agenda uh, carries. We will now proceed with the second reading of 30-day uh, legislation, 30-day and table legislation. The first committee to come before uh, will come before council is our uh, finance committee. Our finance committee is chaired by uh, council member Elizabeth Brown. Council member Brown, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Harden. Um, tonight in finance, I have uh, one. Um, ordinance. It is 0783-2018 to authorize the finance and management director to enter into a contract for the option to purchase asphalt emulsions with Asphalt Materials Incorporated, to authorize the expenditure of one dollar from the general fund, to waive the provisions of competitive bidding in Columbus City Code, and to declare an emergency. The Department of Public Service uses asphalt emulsions to repair roads throughout the city. The term of this contract would be approximately two years, expiring on April 30th, 2020, with no renewal option. The total estimated expenditure for this contract is $900,000 annually. This ordinance is being considered as an emergency so that the supply of materials needed to continue repairing roads will not be interrupted. Director Lombardi, um, could you please speak to the waiver of competitive bidding? Sure. Thank you, President Hardin, Council Member Brown, members of Council. Um, this waiver is really due to the fact that the terms of the contract language and the specifications are different than what the actual contract will be. 
Uh, when the bids went out, we solicited 38 bids. Uh, there was one bid that was received, which put the uh, red flag up for my staff. Uh, there was some uh, concern that there should have been more bidders, so we did make some phone calls and found that uh, a commodity code uh, was erroneously used for this product, so hence the reason why uh, we didn't get as many bidders. So what we chose to do is instead of having a three-year contract, we asked the awarded company to do a two-year contract with no renewals, and this will give us an opportunity to bid this out at a quicker uh, time frame. So the reason why we're waiving is because the original specification called for a three-year contract, and the actual contract's only going to be for two years, so we have to waive because of that reason. And uh, we apologize for the human error. Thank you, Director. Are there any questions from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Harden. That is all the legislation I have. Thank you, uh, Chair Brown. The next committee to come before uh, this council is the Public Service and Transportation Committee. Uh, council Member Emmanuel Remy is. Oh, in re is, 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 oh, sorry, I apologize. We're still in the Finance Committee. Councilmember Remy will uh, read that piece. Thank you very much, Council President Harden and Council Chair Brown. Uh, tonight we have uh, ordinance number 736-2018 to authorize the Director of the Department of Finance and Management to enter into contract with the Greater Columbus Arts Council for the purpose of fostering and sustaining arts and cultural services that enrich the Columbus community to authorize the expenditure of $6,900,000 from the Hotel Motel Excise Tax Fund and to declare an emergency. I'm, do any comments for my question or any comments or questions from my colleagues? I move for passage by voice vote. Please follow the roll by voice. Ms. Brown? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Page? Yes. Remy? Yes. Stinziano? Yes. Tyson? Yes. President Hardin? Yes. Passed. Thank you very much. That's all we have tonight in finance. All right. Now we will move to Public Service Committee, and Councilmember Remy chairs that committee as well. Thank you once again, President Hardin. Tonight in Public Service and Transportation, we have uh, Ordinance Number 536, 2018, to authorize the City Attorney to file complaints in order to immediately appropriate and accept the remaining fee simple and lesser real estate ne necessary to timely complete the Arterial Street Re Rehabilitation James Road Public Improvement Project. And to declare an, well, no, not on this one. Um, any comments from my uh, colleagues this evening? Thank you very much. If not, I move for a voice vote. Or, I'm sorry, uh, move for passage. Please follow the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. Also tonight, we have 06, ordinance number 639 2018 to accept, accept the plat titled Begro Street Dedication Phase 2 from Pizzuti Land LLC and to declare an emergency. This was tabled from uh, March 12, 2018. I'd like to uh, call for, well, any questions from my, or comments from my colleagues? Then I move for passage via voice vote. First, we need to yeah, move to take it from the table. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I need to uh, make a motion that we move it from the table, remove it from the table. Second. Please call the roll. Ms. Brown? By voice. Mr. Brown? Yes. Page? Yes. Remy? Yes. Stenziano? Yes. Tyson? Yes. President Hardin? Remove from the table. All right, now I move for passage via voice vote. Please call the roll by voice. Ms. Brown? Mr. Brown? Yes. Page? Yes. Remy? Yes. Stinziano? Yes. Tyson? Yes. President Hardin? Yes. Pass. <laughs> now we have ordinance number 683-2018 to authorize the Director of Public Service to enter into a contract modification with Complete General Construction Company in connection with the Bridge Rehabilitation Annual Citywide Contract 2017 project to waive the competitive bidding requirements of Columbus City Code Chapter 329 to authorize the expenditure of up to 220,000 from the Streets and Highway Bond Fund to pay for construction, construction administration, and inspection of the project, and to declare an emergency. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. All right, thank you very much. That's all we have in public service and transportation. I now ask for permission to move into administration. Sure. Great. 
Tonight in administration, we have ordinance number 0704-2018 to amend the ma management compensation plan, ordinance number 2713-2013, as amended by, sec by amending sections 4B, 4C, 4 5E, 5G, 9A, 10F, 10L, and to declare an emergency. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Next, we have ordinance number 843-2018 to amend ordinance number 2714-2013 as amended the fire management compensation plan by amending section 3A and to declare an emergency. Any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Finally, we have ordinance number 844-2018 to amend ordinance number 2715-2013 as amended, the police management compensation plan by amending section 3A and to declare an emergency. Any questions or comments by my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you very much. That's all we have tonight in administration. Thank you, Chair Remy. The next committee to come before council is the Housing Co Committee. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Page. Thank you, President Harden. This evening in housing, we have Ordinance 0700-2018, of which I am sponsoring with President Pro Tem Cinziano. To authorize the Director of the Department of Development to enter into a contract with the Affordable Housing Trust for Columbus and Franklin County to facilitate the production of affordable housing and enhance home ownership opportunities in Columbus. To authorize the expenditure of 0.43%, presently estimated at $1,822,000 of the combined rates of 5.1% of the hotel motel excise tax and to declare an emergency. I am, you know, just really excited to offer this ordinance this evening, and I know that our council is personally very passionate and concerned about the affordable housing issues here in our city, and just want to continue to be a partner with the Affordable Housing Trust. Are there any additional comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I would like to ask Attorney Lark Mallory, who is with us this evening, to join us at the podium. She is general counsel for the Affordable Housing Trust and would like to share additional information. Thank you so much, Attorney Mallory, for joining us this evening. Thank you. Council President Harden, Council Member Page, thank you for having me. My name is Lark Mallory. I'm the General Counsel and Director of CDFI Investments for the Affordable Housing Trust. Excuse me. Um, Steve Gladman, our president, could not be here today. He is speaking at a national conference where the city's proposed affordable housing incentives for developers. Um, just want to give you an update on what we've done in 2017 and what we're looking to do in 2018. 2017, we closed about 20 million in loans to developers, and that resulted in 654 affordable units. Um, at the end of 2017, we had four additional loans committed for about 7.5 million, and that will produce an additional 75 units. And as of right now, in 2018, year to date, we have six committed loans for about 12 million, and we're looking at 465 units with that $12 million. Um, we've been very excited, very pleased with what we've been able to do. Thank you very much for your support. Any questions? Thank you, Attorney Mallory. Are there any questions? Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Director, do you have any additional comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Page, Dreamy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. And President Hardin, if I may move to rules and reference. Please. Thank you. And I have Ordinance 0611-2018 to amend Section 3902.03 of the Columbus City Code to update and further establish the structure of the Mayor's Office of Diversity and Inclusion Advisory Council. Are there any additional comments from the director?
Yeah, the EBOC had been dormant for some time, and um, the mayor was very excited to be able to establish the ODI Advisory Council to support his uh, passion for transparency and inclusion as we uh, strive to uh, develop our policy and initiatives in the area of diversity and inclusion. So we're excited about the diversity of the external members of that advisory council, uh, and we can't wait to get uh, to work because we've got a lot of important work to do uh, laying ahead of us. Thanks. Thank you, Director. Are there any additional questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. That's all I have. Thank you. The next committee to come before council is the Public Utilities Committee. President Pro Tem Cinziano chairs that committee. Thank you, President Hardin. Tonight in Public Utilities, bring forward Ordinance 0540 2018 to authorize the Director of Public Utilities to enter into a planned modification with Ohio Mulch Supply Incorporated for services in connection with the Deep Row Hybrid Poplar Program for the Division of Sewerage and Drainage and to authorize the expenditure of $1,550,000 $50,000 from the sewerage system operating fund. Uh, biosolids from both Southerly and Jackson Pike wastewater treatment plants will be utilized as a nitrogen source to grow hybrid poplar trees, which will later be harvested for mulch at the new Lexington tree farm. Approximately 30 acres will be utilized per year at the site with trees being harvested every six to eight years. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. The final ordinance is 0543-2018 to authorize the Director of Public Utilities to establish a purchase order to make payments to Delaware County for sewer services provided for fiscal year 2018 and to authorize the expenditure of $2,200,000 from the Sewerage System Operating Fund. Uh, this agreement, entered into the, by the City of Columbus and Delaware County, uh, occurred in 1991, authorizes discharge of sewerage from Delaware County into the sewer system of the City of Columbus and vice versa in order to avoid duplication of wastewater treatment. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. Thank you, President Hardin. Thank you, President Pro Tem. The next committee to come before council is the Health and Human Services Committee. Councilmember Tyson chairs this committee. Thank you. I have ordinance number 0557-2018 to authorize the Director of Development to execute grant agreements with various social service agencies to address and provide for multiple human service needs, to authorize expenditure of $1,905,470 from the Emergency Human Services Fund, and to authorize expenditure of $1,905,469 from the General Fund and to declare an emergency. This legislation target social service programs that fall into three priority areas, including emergency and basic needs, employment and self-sufficiency, and social, su social success for our residents and neighborhoods. Programs include, but are not limited to daycare, substance abuse prevention programs, um, refugee and resettlement programs, senior care, mediation services, services for the disabled, material assistance and food programs, workforce development, youth programs, and other services. This funding will allow the continuation of much needed services. There has been a one-year grant extension for organizations that were selected in the last grant cycle, which was a three-year grant cycle. We will um, in July of this year, the applications, I think in July, June or July of this year, the applications will be going out for the new grant cycle. Um, the, in the last three years, the people that we have served are children, infants to 17 years of age, families, immigrants and refugees, justice-involved men and women, the LBGTQ, youth, adults and veterans, veterans, youth, and, and youth 18 and 24 years old. The, we have addressed addictions, child care, education, food insecurity, homelessness, infant mortality, mental health, physical health, wellness, disease and disabilities, unemployment and underemployment. Um, last Thursday and Friday, we uh, held hearings from most of the organizations that are getting funds this evening from council. 
These, the, needs, the needs are robust and require social service agencies to be on the front line working with the residents, providing life-changing services that connect people with food, jobs, child care, and more. This year, when I held my hearings, I didn't ask them, were they achieving their goals? I already know they're achieving their goals from working with the director, working with Kim Stan, so they're achieving their goals. This year, I asked a different question. I asked them, what were the gaps and what were the issues in this community? Now, mind you that when we, three years ago, when we had, um, when we asked for applicants, asked for applications for social service programs. We had $5 million that we were able to distribute. We had $13 million in request. And that was without dealing with the eviction issue as it is today. That is not dealing with the addiction issue as it is today. That is not dealing with the trauma-informed care, trauma that we're dealing with in our communities. And so think about that, 13 million then. And so it is going to be imperative, and, the, and we started this last last Thursday and Friday to ask those questions because what we're going to have to do is have a plan, working with United Way, working with the county, working with um, the human service uh, chamber, working with, um, because we really do need to have a real plan of what the human service needs happen to be. If we're gonna to begin to tackle the social determinants of health, we have to have a plan. Just like Experience Columbus has a plan and just like the arts organizations had a plan. And so that is gonna be critically important if we're gonna to try to tackle all the issues that we have facing the human services in this community. And we started that last week. And so with that, um, I am excited to try to work with, like as I said, the foundation, United Way, other individuals to try to create, when working with, of course, the Department of Development, to be able to have a real plan so that we can begin to tackle this significant issue. And if there are no other questions or comments, I am going to um, move for passage. Other organizations are in this legislation this evening. Second. Brown, Brown, Paige, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you. Thank you. The next ordinance is 0574-2018 to approve the funding request on hands-on Central Ohio seeking financial assistance to address an emergency hum human service need pursuant to Columbus City Code to authorize the Director of Development to execute a grant agreement with Hands on Central Ohio to provide referral services to the residents of Columbus and to authorize expenditure of $83,000. $36.03 from the Emergency Human Services Fund to authorize expenditure of $109,622.97 from the general fund and to declare an emergency. Many of you know that um, Hands on Central Ohio is a, a significant partner to the city of Columbus. This agency works to connect people to critical human, human critical community resources and government services through a 24-hour informational and referral line and food link through the comprehensive information and referral line of 211. Um, and so they're a significant partner with us. They also work closely with our um, homeless population and they're now going to start a new initiative that's going to be a diaper hotline. And if there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Paige, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you. The last, no, it's not. Okay. The next ordinance to, is ordinance number 0638-2018 to authorize and direct the appropriation of $10,000 from the Neighborhood Initiatives Fund to authorize expenditure of $20,000 from the Health Special Revenue Fund and $10,000 from the Neighborhood Initiatives Fund to pay the Columbus Foundation Foundation for Active Living for the management of the 2018 Community Gardening Projects and to declare an emergency. The Community Garden Initiative supports the city's effort to build a fair and sustainable food system. As one part of our local food action plan, gardens also improve access and education related to healthy, affordable, and local food. Since 2010, Columbus City Council has supported 222 gardens with the funding of $141,280. In 2017, we had a record of record number of 36 gardens, which included eight new gardens. 24 of these gardens harvested approximately 10,000 pounds of food, and 24 gardens were supported by 700 volunteers. And eight of those garden sites utilized classes at Franklin Park Conservatory, and 17 of those gardens secured other resources um, to support their work. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. 
Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you, ordinance, ordinance number 0710-2018 to authorize the Director of Finance and Management to establish a purchase order with Sanofi Pasture for the purchase of flu, flu zone influenza virus vac, vaccines for Columbus Public Health to weigh the competitive bidding provisions of city code to authorize expenditure of $57,015 from the Health Special Revenue Fund and to pay the cost thereof and to declare an emergency. To ensure having the vaccines that are needed for the upcoming flu season, and we are still in flu season, but upcoming flu season, pre-booking through the manufacturer is the most reliable method of ordering those vaccines. Pre-booking also guarantees on-time delivery and the 340B program pricing. Therefore, competitive bidding is being waived in order to secure our, res our reservation to purchase the vaccine. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Second. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. And now I'd like to move to workforce development. It is to authorize a grant agreement between the Colum this ordinance number 0777-2008 to authorize a grant agreement between the Columbus City Council and St. Clair Media for sponsorship of WSYX ABC job boot camps to authorize appropriation expenditure of $16,000 from the jobs growth sub fund and to declare an emergency. Kristen Breeze from ABC Six is here. She sells promotion and mark sales marketing and promotion. And I want to recognize that this um, legislation is being um, co-sponsored by Councilmember Jiza Page. Um, Ms. Breeze, the floor is yours. Hi, good evening, council members, President Hardin. Uh, I would first like to thank Councilwoman Tyson and Councilwoman Page for, your, for inviting me here tonight. Um, your support has been so wonderful and to support our mission of, at ABC6 of being on your side. Um, so we're on the side of, of the city of Columbus and the residents for over the course of 10 years. We've had the ABC6 job boot camp and it's helped oh, hundreds of people to connect um, with Central Ohio companies to make a career, not just find a job. We couldn't do it without the city, as you're so great to support us with a resume review, a computer lab, and workshops, thanks to Chris Cannon and Citywide Training and Development. Um, it is held at the Grand Event Center in Grandview Heights, and our February job boot camp saw over 300 job seekers. Our next event is Wednesday, April 18th. I invite all of you to the space. It's a new space for us, and to see how many excited job seekers join us there. On behalf of ABC6 and Sinclair Broadcast Group, I thank you for your support to helping, of helping pair employers with job seekers in Central Ohio. Thank you. Thank you. There are no questions or comments. Um, again, I want to thank Human Resources, Department of Technology, for providing support to the Jobs Boot Camp. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Tyson. Seeing no further business uh, to come before council, may I get a motion to recess? Oh, I to, uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? Uh, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Meeting adjourned. We will take non-agenda speakers after uh, we go to um, our zoning committee. So we'll have a few minutes and then we'll go to zoning. Regular meeting number 18 will now come to order. Uh, clerk, me call the roll, please. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Uh, please get, uh, call the roll. Brown, Brown, Paige, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. We will now go to the zoning committee. Councilmember Tyson chairs that committee. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, all right. Before beginning the zoning agenda, I will briefly explain the rules of council as pertaining to speaking before council on zonings and variances. We permit three speakers on each side, three proponents, three opponents, and we ask that they limit their remarks to three minutes on each side, and we provide an opportunity for rebuttal from the applicant. On the advice of the city attorney's office, we ask that anyone here this evening who wishes to speak either for or against a council variance, including staff, 
Please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in. I wish to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Please answer, I will. I will. Thank you very much. All right. All right, first ordinance 073-2018 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3333, 3333.02, AR12, ARLD, and AR1, apartment residential district use. 3312.29, parking space. 3333.09, area rec requirements. 3333.11, ARLD, area district requirements. 3333.16, fronting. 3333.18D, building lines. 3333.22, maximum side yard required. 3333.23, minimum side yard permitted. And 3333.24, rear yard of the Columbus City Codes from the property located at 82 Price Avenue to permit a single, dwell, single unit dwelling, a carriage house on the rear of a lot developed with a three unit dwelling with reduced development standards in the ARLD apartment residential district. The applicant is Ted Uritas. The three, the proposed use is a carriage house on a lot developed with a three unit dwelling. The C department's recommendation is approval and the Victorian village recommendation is four to zero. I will now ask for a staff presentation. Uh, good evening. The site is zoned in the ARLD apartment residential district and developed with a three unit dwelling. The requested council variance will permit the addition of a carriage house dwelling while bringing the non-conforming parcel and three unit dwelling into compliance. The variance is necessary because the ARLD apartment residential district prohibits one three unit dwelling and one single unit dwelling on the same lot. Variances for reduced parking space width, lot width, lot area, fronting, building setback, side yards, and rear yard are included in the request. Staff supports the proposal because the request will not add incompatible uses to the area as there are other carriage houses within this neighborhood. The request is consistent with the recent development pattern in, his, in historic urban neighborhoods and building design will conform to the Victorian Village Commission requirements, therefore City Department's recommendation is approval. Thank you. Is there a presentation or a statement from the applicant or the representative of the applicant? All right, thank you. All right, I will now um, ask for Mr. Kurt Hardman to please come to the podium. Good evening. Please state your name and who you represent. Uh, Kirk Hardman. I live at 88 Price Avenue, which is next door, right next door to this, to the west. Let me start to say that I am not against this um, building taking place, but I thought I'd have a few suggestions or maybe some things that they could uh, use to help. First of all, I understand they have four parking spots in the back. My lot is the same size, and I, it's very difficult for me to get three cars in that spot in the rear uh, easily. I mean, you can do it with backing out, backing in, going straight, and you have to deal with trash containers in the back and then the uh, blue waste um, things on the side. And when you have all that, it's very difficult to get four vehicles in that spot. Um, I understand that the city code, there's a five foot setback from the property line. This has it three feet from my property line and 4.3, I believe, on the other side, the east side. I would just like to see maybe if they could possibly go five feet each side to make it equal on each side. And uh, because this, uh, this is a setback and they said that the uh, other carriage houses, most of the ones on that alley that I have are on the alley. This is set back 18 feet. So this is going to be in the middle of my yard. When I go out to my yard, it'll be right uh, in the approximate middle of it. And um, I was just, my 
recommendation would be just to make the width a little shorter, five feet on each side. You know, look at the four foot parking spots out on the alley. Again, I'm not opposed to it. Uh, I may build a carriage house myself at one time, but uh, these are some things that I thought maybe that I would like to share with the people. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Hardman, for coming down. Is there an Air Commission representative here? I don't, I don't think so. Okay. Um, would the attorney representing the property like to make any uh, comments, please? Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Tyson and members of the Columbus Council. Matt Coppage from Bricker Neckler. Nice to see you all this evening. Um, I thank you to the city staff for the presentation. Um, I really, I, you know, when they said it so well, I didn't want to really add anything else. Um, just touch on a couple of points. This fits the development pattern um, that we're starting to see in the area, carriage houses. Um, and, um, you know, thank Mr. Harmon for coming down here tonight um, for bringing his concerns. The only things I'd point out is that the, uh, in particular on the setback lines, um, those are consistent with not only the development pattern in the area, um, if you look at the existing properties, um, they're very narrow lots. The, the house is already built right on top of there, but the carriage house itself is built um, on the same line, so that's aesthetically pleasing. We're trying to stay with you know, the, the existing structure kind of have the same feel. Um, and then um, regarding the, the parking, um, it's certainly, yes, it'll be tight, but I think it's, it's tight for all the lots across there. Um, the setback, the, the carriage house is set back a little further from the alley to accommodate more parking. That way each unit can have its own dedicated parking spot. We, there was no way to do a four car garage to accommodate all four units. So this was a way to at least ensure that uh, each unit is um, has one dedicated parking spot so we can get more cars off of uh, Price Avenue, um, which obviously there's, there's um, a lot of difficulty to park cars on, on that narrow street. So I'm happy to answer any questions or anything. Are there any questions for my colleagues? Okay. Seeing none, and again, the uh, Victoria Village Commission's recommendation was 4 to 0 and approval of this. And so if there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, again, I thank Mr. Harbin for coming down, but I'm going to move to waive second reading. Second. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Wait. Thank you. I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. The next ordinance is 07. 4-1-2018 to rezone 6450 Uri Road being 55 plus acres located on the east and west sides of Uri Road, 1,000 plus or, neck plus or minus feet north of Warner Road from our rural district to PUD4 Planned Unit Development District. The applicant is Camaminos Incorporated. The proposed use is a single unit residential development. The city's department recommendation is approval and the Northland Community Council's recommendation is approval and the approval was 16 and 0. Um, and so with that, I don't think there's any speakers. I want to move to amend as submitted to the clerk by voice. Please call the roll by voice. Ms. Brown? Mr. Brown? Page, yes. Remy, Stinziano, yes. Tyson, yes. President Hardin. Yes, pass. Thank you. I now want Sorry. to move to amend to emergency by voice vote. Second. Please call the roll by voice. Ms. Brown? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Page? Yes. Remy? Stinziano? Yes. Tyson? Yes. President Hardin. Yes. And um, I'm, before I move for passage, I just want to thank um, um, the attorneys, the residents, um, the commission, um, for all working together um, to move this uh, ordinance forward. And I appreciate the, the collaboration from everyone. And so with that, I would move for passage by voice vote. Second. Clerk, call the roll by voice. Ms. Brown? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Page? Yes. Remy? Stinziano? Yes. Tyson? Yes. President Hardin. 
gets passed. Thank you. And the final ordinance is 0742-2018 to resume um, 550 Stemmel Road, 7.2 acres located at the northwest corner of Stemmel Road and I-71 from R3 Residential District to LM Limited Manufacturing District. The applicant is um, Mike Ballman Plumbing, Inc. The proposed use is a warehouse and... Um, and storage establishment. The city's department recommendation is approval and the Southwest Area Commission's recommendation is approval. There's no questions or comments. I move to amend to emergency. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Minute. Thank you, now I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. That's all I have in the zoning committee. Thank you, thank you Chair Tyson. Um, seeing no further business in the zoning committee, can I get a motion to adjourn? Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. We stand adjourned. We will take non-agenda speakers uh, momentarily.